Hello! Today we're going to pick up with our study of Samson. We will be focusing on Judges 14. Now if you remember from Judges chapter 13, we learned about the conception of Samson. His mother had been sterile and she was visited by an angel of God. <clears throat> and his father Manoah had uh, certainly challenged the angel of God and then given an offering to God. Now, the angel of God told Manoah's wife, Samson's mother, that her son would be a Nazarite, which is one that is um, set apart to God, and that he would begin the deliverance of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Philistines. So, picking up with chapter 14, we learn about Samson's marriage. Now, this is not a marriage to Delilah, his most famous wife, but his first wife. So, from Samson's birth until the time of this marriage, there's really not any information. So, we pick up with Samson going down to Timnah, and, which is a Canaanite town, and he sees a woman there, and he gets very excited by her and says, that is the woman for me, and he tells his parents this. His parents, <clears throat> his parents say, can you not find a woman of our, of our heritage to be your wife? Must you go to a, a woman who worships pagans, a Philistine? His mother and father uh, definitely did not approve, however, he was adamant that this was going to be his wife. And so they went and arranged for the marriage. It says that Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. And he definitely had the hots for her. There's no doubt about it. What his parents didn't know is that by complying, they were actually doing God's work because Samson was going to be used to confront the Philistines. At that time, the Philistines were ruling over Israel. So Samson goes down to Timnah together with his father and mother. And as they approached the vineyards of Timnah, which had renown, being beautiful vineyards, as they approached the vineyards, suddenly a young lion came running, roaring toward them. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power, him being Samson, so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands, just as he might have torn apart a young goat. But he didn't tell his father or his mother what he had done. Then he went down and he talked with the woman, and he liked her. Sometime later, when he went back to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass. In it was a swarm of bees with some honey. He scooped the honey out with his hands, and he ate some, and he gave some to his parents. But he didn't tell his parents where the honey had come from. Now his father went down to see the woman, and Samson went and had a feast, which was customary for the bridegrooms. And there were 30 companions assigned to this affair, and it's believed that these might have been bodyguards protecting them against marauders, but they were of the town, which would mean that they were also Canaanites. Samson says, let me tell you a riddle. And apparently this was customary at wedding feasts to tell riddles. So he says, if you can give me the answer within the seven days of the feast, I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes, which may well have included jewelry and silver and things of great value. If you can't tell me the answer, you must give me 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. Tell us your riddle, they said. Let's hear it. And he says, out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. For three days they could not give the answer. On the fourth day they went to Samson's wife and said, Coax your husband into explaining the riddle for us, or else we will burn you and your father's household to death. Did you invite us here to rob us, to make us poor? Then Samson's wife threw herself on him, sobbing. You hate me. You don't really love me. You've given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. Samson said, I haven't even told my parents the answer. But she cries and nags him for the duration of the feast, all through the remaining days. So on the seventh day, he finally told her, because she continued to press him. She, in turn, explained the riddle to her people. Before sunset on the seventh day, the men of the town said to him, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? 
Samson said to them, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. And basically he's crying foul. He's saying that was unfair. Uh, and we have to remember that heifers were not used for plowing. So he was crying uh, of the injustice of how they, they came about this, plus alluding to the fact that they used his wife to get the answer. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson in power, and he went down to Ashkelon, which is one of the principal cities of the Philistines, and struck down 30 of their men, stripped them of their belongings, and gave their clothes to those who had explained the riddle. Burning with anger, he went up to his father's house, and Samson's wife was given to the friend who had attended him at the wedding, which would have been his best man. So the primary lesson that I take from chapter 14 is that God is sovereign in all things. There's a couple of reasons why I say this. One, God tells us that Samson is going to help deliver the Israelites from the Philistine people, and this happens by his deciding to marry a Philistine woman. Now, one of the strange things that I saw in this story was that Samson goes down to Timnah with his mother and father, tears a lion up without his mother and father being aware of it, and then uses this in a riddle, this very obscure riddle that he comes up with, effectively to trick the locals and get them to have to give him 30 outfits. He's very angry when they trick him and turn, use his wife against him, and then he has to give them clothes, but what does he do? He goes and kills 30 Philistine people. So there you go, the beginning of the end. Well, this was certainly a dramatic story, uh, but we're not done yet because, again, we haven't gotten to the mysterious Delilah. That'll come soon enough. Have a blessed day. Bye.